Frankie, tell George to go outside and do you know what. Do you know who I am, Mr. Jason? I give up. Who are you? Well, since you asked so nicely, the government knows me by my slave name. But you can call me Bravo Vamula! And I am the wartime consigliere for the American people. Now, I heard you were from Hollywood, so I can assume you've heard of us. I've heard of the American people. I'm glad. Hopefully that will clear up this how full of shit am I question you've been asking yourself. Now, Mr. Jason, I have a YouTube channel myself, so I can imagine how painful this must be for you. But George and Trish brought this all on themselves. I implore you not to go down that road with them. You can always take comfort in the fact that you never had a choice. Now tell me, are these your words or not? Bravo Von Mueller's site tells you because I find it to be filled with nonsense and you should... Filled with nonsense? Really? Now here's the thing. We're going to have a little Q&A and at the risk of sounding redundant, please make your answers genuine. Do you want a Chesterfield? No. So as I said before... Make your answers genuine. Are you an American citizen or not? I have only American citizenship. I carry only one passport. It's a U.S. passport. I was born in the Bronx. I'm getting angry asking the same question a second time. Now tell me, did you go to Israel or not? I have never traveled to Israel. Okay, all joking aside... Uh, I must thank Jason Goodman for giving me the chance to clarify this because I've actually never really made a video on the dual citizen, the definition of a dual citizen and so forth. So again, I have to thank Jason for this opportunity. Now, he says that my channel is filled with nonsense. Well, everybody knows that to be a falsehood. I only tell the truth. Now... Apparently, some people do not like the truth, so they say things. But that's okay. I got thick skin, no problem. So we're going to go over this issue about dual citizen or dual citizenship. Now, I don't know much about how it works in Russia or Turkey or Japan, but I am familiar with how it works in Ireland. Okay, so why don't we start off with Ireland? My mother's family is Celtic. So from what I can ascertain is that if you can prove that either one of your grandparents, your mother or probably grandparents, we're talking about Americans here, you can go to Ireland and you can acquire Irish citizenship. All you have to do is prove that one of your grandparents was Irish. Because you know what? I don't know, it must be like 70, 80 percent of America who has Irish blood in them. I mean, it seems like everybody has Irish blood in them, especially on St. Patty's Day. So, we're starting off with that. It's pretty clear, pretty clear cut there. Now, I must, on record, I have never done that. I have never gone to, I have never gone to Ireland. I've never asked for Irish citizenship. Here's some facts. Now, we. this has been decided by the Supreme Court in 1967, apparently, this thing came up, and it was, the issue was solved. In 1967, according to the United States Supreme Court, you are allowed to have dual citizenship. Now, I don't know if that's what our founding fathers wanted. It doesn't really matter. The Supreme Court made it official in 1967. You're allowed to have dual citizenship. And it even says here. So that's a little bit of uh, history. The problem is the concept of dual citizenship is problematic when you're talking about the government. And that's what I'm basically going to be talking about today. Positions of power. You see, because you really got things called envy and jealousy. They're intertwined in the human psyche. So there is, it is somewhat problematic when you have a country and everybody 
in a position of power is from one tribe, then you have an issue of jealousy and envy. Now, this has been going on for 2,000 years. We're not, I'm not going to give you too much history, but you can imagine that this problem has been around for thousands and thousands of years with humans because we never really change. Human nature never, ever changes. I'm not saying it's good, and I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's human nature, and it ain't ever going to change. But that will not stop the government from trying. That's really what the government is trying to do. They're trying to take out all your emotion. Everything that you really, really, truly feel, well, you're not going to be allowed to feel that in the future. The way the governments think they're going to do it is, well, they'll starve you to death. You will not get any food. Remember, they don't even, they, they're trying to do away with small farmers, right? If the corporations and all the dual citizens and all the people in power control the farms, guess what? The only way you're going to eat is if you take orders correctly. Now, that's the scary part, and so I do have to kind of sway off the subject here just for a moment and discuss this new program that the United Nations is implementing. They're just getting started. Of course, they'll use these programs on the vulnerable the refugees, the immigrants. They literally have to have an eye scan and then they eat for free. I mean, actually, if you're an immigrant or a refugee, it probably is not that bad of a deal. Little eye scan, get some free food. But that is how they're going to take away your freedom of thought. You see, the last thing that refugee or immigrant is going to be able to do is have any true feelings of envy, or jealousy, or anger, all those emotions are going to have to be repressed if you're going to take the eye scan, you're going to do exactly what the government tells you to do, and you're going to get your food. Like I said, we're just going to briefly talk about this. Is it on the same subject as what we're talking about today? Yes, kind of, because remember, I'm talking about p people in positions of power. Because I think it's not what George and Jason talk about that matters. It's what they do not talk about. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It's not what George Webb Swigert and Jason Goodman talk about that matters. It's what they don't talk about. And what they don't talk about is how one tribe is overly represented in the positions of power, whether it be government, whether it be banking, whether it be media, brainwashing media, media, all the important jobs, they have them. So now, talking about the United Nations and an eye scan, it does have something to do with it in the big picture, but let's get back on subject. Okay, so we talked about Ireland dual citizenship. Now we're going to go to Israel, and they have a law there. The name of the law is called the Law of Return. Now, in the beginning, I believe it had to be your on your mother's side. Only your mother's side you were able to claim to be Jewish. But now I think that might have changed. It says here in 1999, uh, the Supreme Court, or no, it wasn't 1999, maybe it was 2008, I'm not an expert in this law, but uh, the f here's the thing. All, you automatically have Israeli citizenship upon arrival in Israel. So it's really just an automatic thing. I think my point is when I talk about dual citizens and the positions of power, it doesn't matter whether you have it or not. It's automatic for you if you want it. So... Let's go into some more details here. Now, a dual national is not considered a foreign citizen, and you are subject to a mandatory military service. Now, I will say this about Jason. Now, I guess it all depends on his parents. If his parents decided to send him over to Israel when he was a teenager and get involved in the culture, well, then we know that he might have been mandatory it would have been probably mandatory for military service. I'm not going to go into all the specifics. 
I just want to go into some of the basics when it comes to being a dual citizen and what I feel is most important in America with our dual citizenship problem. And just a friendly reminder, this is my opinion. Remember, we are independent observers. We're just watching the George Webb Swigert soap opera. It's my opinion. So that's why I don't feel too bad when Jason Goodman says that my channel is filled with nonsense. I don't feel too bad because that's his opinion. And he's allowed to have that opinion. So since this is technically one of our late night sessions on the George Webb Swigert soap opera, let me just briefly say a couple things that he has been saying lately. Uh, one thing, George says that the uh, FBI with the CIA help is involved in selling counterfeit diamonds, counterfeit art, engaged in a market to sell Bitcoin. And uh, my own opinion, that will not end well with the naive snowflakes. So let's see what else. All says in this video here, George says that he played basketball in Germany. I have to guess that's semi-pro. Some people, I don't know, it doesn't really matter to me. But I don't know about you guys, but I think that George should practice his Spanish on his own time. Not really sure that all the English-speaking listeners on his show want to hear him rambling on with Panama Jack. Yeah, they got a new... I mean, he may not be a new guy, but he was on the show today, Panama Jack. And uh, so they, they ramble on about a bunch of things. And let me tell you how I feel some of the shows go. The shows go a little bit like this. Now, Panama Jack is going to filter through the raw metadata on the MSG file, and he will upload and share this with the crowdsource community in a safe manner as to disseminate the new raw data into a readable compressed version that even our Russian and Bulgarian fans can enjoy in this soap opera fashion. But wait, it gets better, because Jason says all he really wants to do is bring it out from the shadows, bring it out into the sunlight, bring those creatures from out under the rocks, and possibly docks, and burn that bravo von Mueller, because I never did like him anyhow. I never did like you. But no, seriously, now, I'm, you know I'm just joking. Most of you already know that I have a sick sense of humor, and I'm just joking. I must say this. I seem to like that Christian Panama Jack fella. He was the guest. I mean, this is all just a little parody, lampoon, nothing personal. Panama Jack seemed like a nice guy. Okay, so now we're going to get back on track. The story, dual citizens, is it problematic in America? Possibly. But what I want to focus on is how many of them are in positions of power. So as I finish out this video, you're just going to see name after name after name. It doesn't matter whether it's in government. doesn't matter whether it's in Hollywood or sports, brainwashing media, government. They're in every position of power. And if they're not there, they have a shill. Who works for them? That's what APAC's all about, isn't it? Why do you think the congressmen and the senators are so afraid to talk about Jason's tribe? Because they know if they don't say good things about these people, they're not going to get elected. That's how they took over our country. So it's not what George and Jason talk about that matters. It's what they don't talk about. Well, I guess I must say this before we go any further. Um, now, I'm assuming that Jason Goodman told us the truth. When Jason said that he, he pledged his allegiance to only America, that he had never been to Israel and he was not a dual citizen, I applaud him for this. I mean, to set the record straight, I definitely applaud him for this. He said he clearly stated his allegiance to America... He only has one passport. He was born in the Bronx, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if he's telling the truth, again, good for him. Because we're going to dig into this a little deeper. One thing that I was concerned about when he brought it up, I think it was at the 38-minute mark of that video that I showed you earlier. It was a 38-minute mark where he brought up 
Bravo Vamula. And he said, um, he said, you got to, um, innocent until proven guilty. He was talking about himself. I don't know why he had to say that. I mean, we're not talking about guilty or innocence here. All we're talking about is human nature, that I am an independent observer. We're, talk we're looking at human nature. It's not that you're guilty or innocent, but I felt a little troubled when he had to make the statement that he was innocent until proven guilty, because I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I guess this is a good time for me to say, when I use dual citizen, I use it as a general term, and I usually only apply it to the posi people in positions of power. So in reality, Jason kind of got it mixed up. He was only answering a question that somebody was given to him on the uh, questionnaire or whatever it was, uh, Periscope. But in reality, it was a that was a wrong question because I only usually use the term dual citizen when it applies to people in government, in positions of power, when it comes to the brainwashing media. Now, Jason was in Hollywood, so technically I could use the term on him in generalities. Oh, and furthermore, that reminds me, it is really, really hard to believe that someone like Jason, who worked in Hollywood that many years and failed to make the mandatory visit to the Holy Land, I mean, that in and of itself is sacrilegious. So we really learned something here. By Jason telling us what he did, we've learned something here. We learn why... Jason failed in Hollywood. This is clear evidence to me why Jason could not make it in Hollywood. For everyone and his mother knows that you must go to the homeland. You must go to the Holy Land and show your respect and pledge allegiance. Lord have mercy. Everybody knows this. I mean, do I have to teach Jason everything? I mean, if you are in Hollywood... And, of course, that's how you get the job. If, you, if you're one of their tribe, I will not use the word dual citizen for Jason. If you're in the tribe, that's how you get the job. But here's the thing. If you're going to go forward, if you're going to move up in Hollywood, for God's sake, you got to make that trip over to the Holy Land. you got to put that little piece of paper in the wailing wall just... Donald Trump did it, for God's sake. So this really surprised me. When I heard that Jason had never been over there, he had never touched the wailing wall like Donald Trump did. Oh, man. I knew right there and then how Jason failed. Now, the next time Jason goes back to Hollywood, he's got to make that trip over there first. You have to pledge your allegiance. This is why I use the term dual citizen. If you're going to be in a position of power today, you must show your allegiance. How do you... I know this. It, go, it, it goes in almost every important industry there is, from Wall Street to government to Hollywood to CNN. I don't care what it is. If it's an important industry, they control it. Yes, you've seen the names. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Matter of fact, I'm not telling Jason or George anything they don't already know. They just don't like to talk about it. How convenient. So, yes, you're never going to hear the truth on this subject from them, but what you will hear is, oh, make sure you question that Bravo Von Mueller guy because I find he's so full of nonsense. Yeah, really, that was a good one. Okay, so we'll close this late night session down with what I feel is probably the most important tell in the whole scam. You see, when we're talking about their tribe, their numbers are so, so small, aren't they? I mean, the numbers are tiny, tiny numbers in population. You see, I come from Vegas. I know the odds. Um, I dabble in mathematics a little bit. And I know it's humanly impossible, universally impossible, mathematically impossible for that tiny group of people to have all the positions of power, it's impossible. So then we get to probably the most important factor in America today. You're talking about jealousy 
and envy. Now, I did a video a while back with the jealousy and envy factor down in South Africa. Now, there's some problems going on down in South Africa, and it all revolves around jealousy and envy. I recommend you watch that video because there's a difference between jealousy and envy. Now, I used to love it when people would make comments on my videos. Oh, you're so jealous. Oh, you're so jealous. It, it means nothing to me. You, you see, I really don't give a shit. All I know is human nature, and I know that humans have this emotion. It's called jealousy and envy. One is worse than the other, and that's what we're experiencing today on many, many levels. You have 95 million Americans who are out of the workforce, and they have the internet, and they are learning the truth that there is a small group of people who have all the power, have all the money, and you've got this large group. You can almost say it's 99% of the country. But I won't go with the 99%. I'll just go with the 95 million Americans out of the workforce. It would be human nature for many of them to feel jealousy or envy. And that's what makes this cycle keep on going around and around and around. Because if you study history, that's really what we're looking at. History repeating itself over two, three, maybe 10,000 years has been repeating where a small group of people who think they're extremely intelligent, and they may be intelligent, but what happens is they use their intelligence to cheat the system. They use their intelligence to scam the system. And then when they leave us out of the equation, when they leave 95 million Gentiles out to rot, what, what are you going to expect? I'm just talking human nature here. These are the things that George and Jason are not going to tell you about it. They realize it, trust me. George is very intelligent. Jason is very intelligent. They understand the problems we have in America. The 1% have all the money, and 99% are getting extremely angry. Do your research on what the difference between jealousy and envy is. I believe, in my opinion, if you go back to the 1930s, that was envy. We don't want to go down that road. Trust me, we do not want to go down that road, but unfortunately history repeats itself. What I want these people to do, you know that, I want them to come to the table. I want them to negotiate, and we will dictate our terms to them. Now, George and Jason, they're nobody. Now I'm talking to the 1%, the elite, the billionaires who actually make all the calls. The people that are over top of George and Jason, the billionaires, all I tell them is to come to the negotiating table. We will dictate terms to you. You will give up half of the stolen loot. Or just study history. I mean, all I am is an independent observer of human nature. I don't really give a shit which way it goes, trust me. You got two options when the shit hits the fan. You got two options. You can either fight or run. That's really all it is to it. When the shit hits the fan, you are going to fight or run. If you don't have any money, you'll probably have to fight. If you have money, you probably run. Look at Alex Jonestein. Alex Jonestein already has it set up with his lawyers. What is it? The Bronfman lawyers have already set up Alex Jonestein's escape plan. Alex Jonestein has all the money in the world. Trust me, when this shit hits the fan, Alex Jonestein is on that boat to wherever it's safe because he has the money. The problem is the 95 million Americans who don't have a job, they're going to be stuck here when the shit hits the fan. You've seen the names. There's lots of them. Seriously, I mean... These names, I mean, they're prob these names are probably moving faster than you can read them. Unbelievable. This is all I got for you today. I've pretty much said my piece. I thank Jason Goodman again he, for giving me this opportunity to talk about 
the dual citizenships in America, which is all legal. The Supreme Court made it legal. Because, uh, you know, I've been making videos now for probably almost three years or so. I always use the word dual citizen. Some people don't know what it means, but he gave me a perfect opportunity to clarify. When I use the word dual citizen, I usually use it with somebody in a position of power, you know, government. Now, Jason, having failed in Hollywood, he would not really fit under the term dual citizen because he is not in a position of power. Now, he's trying to get there. He's probably well off, and he's trying to turn his soap opera into something that has power and influence, and we'll see how that works for him and George. But until he gets power and influence, until he gets up into the numbers that Alex Jonestein has, for now, he's just a nobody. Oh, he may have some juice in Hollywood. We don't know for sure what family members are helped him out in Hollywood. It'll all come out in the wash. But this is a beautiful thing. YouTube, the Internet's a beautiful thing where we can come out and we can say what we feel. We can explain ourselves. George can explain himself. Jason can come out and clarify all the facts in his life. It's a beautiful thing. So as you see the names scroll by, I'll just sign off right here. It's been another late night session on the soap opera. Thanks for joining me.